Okay, in this video, we're going to be covering 10.4, um, the determinant of a square matrix. So we did kind of already discuss the determinant of the two by two matrix, right? That is the formula um, AD minus um, BC, and that is, right, this downward uh, product subtracted or minus the upward product, okay? And so that is talked about here, that every square matrix can be associated with a real number called its determinant, okay? Nowhere does it say that that determinant is unique. So you can have two matrices that are not equivalent to each other, but they still have the same determinant, okay? So for a two by two matrix, we wanna talk about first the um, notation for determinants. So you might have it denoted it like this, DET, which means determinant. And my camera is freezing. So give me one second. I'm gonna pause the video and fix the camera. Okay, I think, oh, no, it's still freezing a little bit. It seems to not, um, be working, so give me one second, sorry. Okay, so the determinant can be denoted by the notation DET of A, or it can be denoted by, um, it looks like absolute values of bar of A, but they're not absolute values. What they are is essentially these little boxes, right? But without the little uh, part that makes it look like a bracket. So when you see the matrix inside straight lines, then that means you need to evaluate the determinant of that matrix, okay? So it's not technically the absolute value because the absolute value is just the number or the distance away from zero of one particular number, whereas this is an array of numbers. And so the um, determinant is denoted with those bars around that particular matrix. Okay, so now, we did talk about this formula from before, and I do apologize for the video quality. I have no idea what's going on with my camera, but it seems to be glitching a lot. And I've tried to fix it. I've restarted everything um, during those pauses, and it, it seems to still be having um, an issue. So I'm gonna try to keep getting through this video so that I can post it for you guys, um, and I'll keep working on the equipment to see what's going on. Um, so those vertical bars can um, denote the absolute value, but here again, it's some, it means something different, okay? So um, note that the determinant is the difference of the products of the two diagonals, right? I told you it's the downward diagonal minus the upward diagonal. And, um, as you start computing more and more of these determinants, you'll realize that they can be positive, they can be negative, or they could be zero, okay? Um, the determinant of a matrix of order one by one, meaning the matrix has one row and one column, therefore it just has one entry. Um, the determinant of that, there's nothing to multiply or anything, so it literally is the same value. So the determinant of that same matrix is that same value negative two. And so then here's the example one, we're gonna go ahead and evaluate um, all three of these determinants. So we're going to do the downward diagonal, which is four, minus the upward diagonal product, which is negative three. So it's actually four, plus three, so the determinant here is going to be seven. Similarly for B, we're going to do the downward product first and we get four, subtract, and then the upward product. And we get another four. So then we end up with the value of zero as our determinant. And then lastly, we'll do the downward product first. We get zero minus the upward product, which turns out to be three. 
If you can do that in your head, great. If you need to do that in a calculator, then please take the second to do it in the calculator. Um, but zero minus three is negative three. So there we have three different matrix or matrices. Um, and one of them had a determinant of, of a positive number. One of them had a determinant with zero. And one of them had a determinant that was negative. Okay. So now we're going to talk about the determinant um, using cofactors. Okay. So they don't give me, oh, um, I know what it is. The cofactors is very, very, very confusing, okay? So let's say you have a three by three matrix and this, this system will work for any um, square matrix, not just the three by threes, but I am gonna show you how to do it with a three by three, okay? So let's say you have this um, guy, this guy, I'm just putting some general entries in here because I don't wanna use specific numbers because then those specific numbers might have um, certain patterns. Like if I multiply these guys and I add them together, I get um, negatives. So here's how it works. What you do is you choose a row or a column to be your cofactors, okay? Normally I always choose the top row, but that's not required. You can literally choose any row or any column to be your cofactors, okay? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose row, the top row to be my cofactors. Okay. And this is how it works. You're going to write that cofactor first. Okay. Then you're going to actually find the determinant of something. And then it's going to be minus the next cofactor times the determinant of something. And then plus the third cofactor times the determinant of something. Okay, now it's always going to be the first positive, the second negative, and the third positive again. If I had a four by four matrix and I had to do a fourth cofactor, then that one would also be negative, like B is. Okay, but this is just a three by three. So you'd have to have that pattern in mind first of all. Okay, so it's always first is positive, second is negative, and then third is um, positive again. Okay. Now, um, the way it works is since I'm using A as my cofactor for this first term, I'm going to cover up A and I'm going to cover up its row and its column. So this is its row and this is its column. And you see those four entries there, E, F, H, I? Those are going to be the entries that go in here, E, F, H, I. Then for my second one, I'm gonna cover up the column with B and the row with B. And you see those numbers there, D, F, G, I. Those are gonna go into the second matrix, D, F, G, I. And then finally, you cover this column and this row. And these are going to be the values inside that last matrix. So D, E, G, H. And then you find the the um, determinants for each of these little square matrices. So for this, it's going to be this product, EI minus this product, FH. Then my minus B. Then here we have DI minus FG. And the last term we have plus C. And then DH minus e.g. Okay, so if you use the top row, then it's going to be positive, negative, positive. Okay, if I chose the middle row, the middle row would actually be a negative cofactor, then positive, then negative, then positive. If I would have chose the bottom row, it would have been positive, negative, and then positive again cofactor. Now, I could also have chosen a column to be my cofactors, okay? If I choose this column, the first one, the first cofactor will be positive, the second would be negative, 
and then the third would be positive. If I chose the middle row as my cofactors, this one would be negative, this one would be positive, and this one would be negative. And if I chose the third column as my cofactors, this one would be positive, negative, and positive when I do the setup, okay? And it's not just negative, it's literally the opposite of whatever's there. So I know I have minus B, but if B itself was a negative five, this would be a minus negative five, which would actually end up becoming a plus five, okay? So it's very tricky with cofactors, okay? Now, if I distribute all of this, you're gonna end up with A, E, I, minus A, F, H, minus B, D, I, plus B, F, G, plus C, D, H, minus C, E, G, okay? Now, I'm going to do the same um, determinant using a shortcut for three by three matrices, and you'll notice that it comes out to be the exact same thing, okay? So let me go over to my other page, and I'm going to write that same matrix, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Now, when I'm doing it without the cofactors, what I'm going to do is I'm going to recopy the first two rows. It's kind of emulating the process for um, the two by two matrices, how you do the downward products and then you subtract the upward products, right? So I don't, I only have one full three diagonal. I don't have any more full diagonals with all three, um, all three, because this is a three by three. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rewrite the first two columns on the outside. And I gotta pause for a second so I could give the computer time for its lag. Um, and then this is the way it goes. So my downward, here I have three, here I have three, and here I have three. And remember, all of those products will be just as they are. So I will end up with A, E, I plus B, F, G plus C, D, H. Then I would do the upward ones. That's only one upward, that's only two. Here's where I have a three um, entry diagonal. Here I have another three entry diagonal. And here I have another three direct, uh, entry diagonal. Notice here I only have two and one, so that's not enough to do the upward diagonal. And notice that when we did the upward diagonals, we would always subtract those, right? So it would be subtract, or let me not do that with the pin. So it would be subtract C, E, G, subtract A, F, H, and subtract B, D, I. Now I want to go compare that with what we had over here and notice that it's upside down, I know. It looks funny. Um, but you just wanna make sure that you have all the same factors or all the same numbers. And so notice that I do have AEI. I know it's upside down, but you do have it over here on the back side of my same page. Um, then BFG, so this one we had. BFG we have here and notice both of them are positive just like they are there. Then we have positive CDH, which is also here. Then we had negative CEG. And I do have a negative CEG over here. And then I have AFH, which I have over here. And then last is negative BDI, which I do have here. So all of those same terms I get doing it without the cofactors. Okay, so it does become easier to do it without the cofactors. Okay, so for example three, it does want me to find the determinant of this three by three matrix. So I, I'm going to do it with cofactors two times, taking a row on one time and taking a um, column the other time, just so I can show you that you get the same value. 
And then I'm going to do it the shortcut. Now, I recommend that from the rest of the semester, you always do the shortcut just because it's it's shorter, it's simple, it's sweeter, you know, it's an awesome thing. But for those of you who are going to be engineer majors, you definitely need to learn how to do it with the cofactors because as soon as I put variables in there, you can't do it. Um, I mean, you could do it. That's not the problem. The problem is not whether there's variables in there. The problem is, is when you see matrices later that have four by fours or five by fives, or even like the giant ones, 10 by tens, um, you can't do this shortcut with those, okay? And so uh, it doesn't necessarily work with, with the other ones, okay? So with that said, let's go straight to it and try to do this. Um, So what we're going to do is first by cofactors. And I'm going to use um, a different row. I'm going to use row three. Now, I will tell you how you know which one to use and which one not to use. The easiest way to do it is the row or the column that has the most zeros. Okay, That's the way you're going to want to choose to do it is the row or the column that has most zeros. Now I noticed that row three had a zero, so that's why I chose to use that as my example for a row um, cofactor, okay? So I'm gonna do that. And then since this is gonna be my cofactors row, it's gonna be, remember it's positive, negative, positive. So it's gonna be a positive four times some determinant. Then once I know this is positive, the rest of the row is gonna go, you know, they're gonna oscillate, right, and sign. So the next one would be a minus zero times this determinant. And then the last one would be a positive one cofactor times that determinant. Now, really, I don't even need to figure out what this is because no matter what it is, it's all gonna get multiplied by zero. So it's really just gonna zero itself out. That is the reason why you wanna use the row or the column with the most zeros because then that will be the least amount of computations that you'll have to do. Okay, to determine this determinant. So if I'm choosing four, I'm gonna cover four's row and column. And those guys are what's gonna go inside um, that determinant box. So I'm gonna have two, one, negative one, two. Now for zero, it doesn't really matter because no matter what this determinant is, when I multiply by zero, the whole thing's gonna zero out anyway. But for one, we have to cover his row and his column. And so these are the four values that are gonna go inside that determinant box. Zero, two, three, and negative one. And so then let's find these um, determinants. So we have this downward, which gives me four, minus the upward, which is negative one. Then we have plus one, and then the downward would give me zero minus the upward, which would give me six. So I end up with four times five plus one times negative six. That's actually gonna be 20 minus six, which is 14. So the determinant of this um, matrix is 14. Now I'm gonna do the same matrix again but this time I'm gonna do it using the shortcut where I just use the um, diagonals, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is recopy my matrix. So bear with me, I do know that it's glitching a lot and I apologize. So I'm trying to talk and move as slow as possible so that it can catch up by the time it glitches. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna rewrite those two rows. So zero, three, and four, and it does have to be the two first two rows. You do not ever copy down that last row, that last, I'm sorry, I'm saying rows and I mean columns. You rewrite the first two columns and you will never write that last column. So this one, two, one will never get recopied over here. So now I'm gonna do all my downward products. And so when I do zero times anything, it's just zero. Plus two times two is four, times four is 16. 
plus one times three is three times zero is zero. Now I'm gonna do the upward products. So if that's not enough, I need three and it would be minus four times negative one times one is negative four. Remember all the upwards have a minus and that's gonna be zero minus this product, which is six. So what do I end up with? I end up with 16 plus four minus six, which is also 14. And so we get that same determinant, okay? Um, what I didn't do, I forgot completely, was to do the cofactors again, but using a column. So we're gonna do by cofactors again, but I'm gonna do a column this time. And again, you wanna choose a column that has the most zeros. I'm just rewriting the original um, matrix because the other one's all scribbled on, okay? So I wanna choose this column or this column actually, because both of these columns do have um, a zero in them, okay? But if I choose the first column, that first entry is positive, then the next one would be negative, and then the last one would be positive. If I choose the second column, and I, I'm going to choose the second column because I have never chosen the second row or the second column yet. So I'm gonna use column two, okay? I'm gonna use these cofactors, but notice the position of this one. So if this one was positive, then this one should be negative. And then they need to oscillate in sign, okay? So this one would be a negative two, and then the determinant. Then I would have plus this entry, negative one times a determinant. And then I would have minus zero times that determinant. Now it doesn't really matter what's in here because once I evaluate this determinant over here, it's gonna get multiplied by zero. So all of this is just gonna zero out anyway. But I do need to figure out what determinant to take for the two cofactor and the negative one cofactor. So for the two cofactor, I'm going to cover its row and its column. And those values left over are gonna go inside that, um, those bars. So three, two, four, one. Then I'm gonna take negative one. So I'm gonna take out his row and his column you can't see here, my finger's too fat. So let me try to, nope, not working. Let me cover it like this. There we go. And so those are the values that need to go inside um, those bars is zero, one, four, one. And so let's do our evaluation. We're gonna have negative two times downward product is three minus upward product, which is six plus a negative is the same as minus one, and then the downward product, which is zero, minus the upward product, which is four. So then this becomes negative two times negative three minus um, negative four. And so I get um, six plus four. Now something happened because I did not get the correct numbers. Let me make sure that I wrote down my problem correctly. Yep. And so then zero, this should be negative. Oh, I see what I did. Four times two is not six. Four times two is eight. And that'll do it. So then I actually, in here, I get a negative five. And negative two times negative five is actually positive 10. And lo and behold, we get that value 14 again, okay? So you can do it by cofactors. You just have to be careful which row and which column you take because everybody should have, every cofactor will have a specific sign. Okay, and it always starts with the first one being positive, and then it'll go negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, however many entries there are. Wherever you leave off, okay, 
that's gonna the next one's gonna have to be the same thing. So if this one was positive, then this one should be negative. And then positive, negative, positive, negative, so on. Okay. So it just keeps working in that fashion. Okay. So now that we've done that, we're gonna go ahead and do our practice problems. We do only have two practice problems. Um, and it's just finding those determinants. So this should be super easy, especially since you can use the shortcut um, for number two. Honestly, in number two, the cofactors would probably be the easiest way to do it. And you would either use the top cofactors because of the double zeros or the last uh, column cofactors since it has double zeros. Okay. But you do have a choice there on how to do it. Just to use a shortcut again, I'm going to use a shortcut for that problem. You'll see. So downward product is negative 42 minus the upward product, which is negative 18. So it's actually negative 42 plus 18, which is negative 24. Now for the three by three, I'm going to repeat the first two columns and then all the downward diagonals, this product, this product, and this product. So I will get a negative 32 plus zero plus zero, because zero times anything is zero. Zero times anything is zero. Now the upwards, not enough, because this is a three by three. I need three. So minus that zero, minus that zero, and then minus that zero. And so I do end up with just negative 32 as the um, determinant there, okay? And that is the end of this video.